It's a rite of passage so many young Aussies had undertaken, but little did 20-year-old Emma Carey know when she left for a three-month overseas adventure, she would return a physically different person. Five days into the trip of a lifetime, the adrenaline junkie jumped out of a plane, but the skydiving session went horribly wrong when the parachute tangled and choked her tandem instructor, causing him to pass out. Emma bore the full brunt of the fall and broke her spine in two places. After recovering from surgeries, she came home a paraplegic and began rehabilitation. It was a long and painful recovery, but Emma's fighting spirit helped her defy all odds. Nine years after leaving hospital, Emma has chronicled her journey in a book entitled The Girl Who Fell From The Sky. I caught up with her and asked if she ever thought of that 2013 sliding door moment when she jumped from the plane. My entire life would have been completely different yeah. and there's no way of saying whether things would have been better or worse or what would have, you know, what would have happened from that moment but I know that everything would have been different if I hadn't have jumped. Before that, because I know you're, you're up for an adventure, mm -hmm. but before all that, had there ever been a niggling doubt in your mind? What if something went wrong? About skydiving? Yeah. No, not at all. And I don't know if it was just my age. I was only 20, but I honestly didn't give it a moment's thought. Yeah. I just wanted to do it. So when you, when you fell, when you realized, when it twigged that this is not going right, what were your thoughts? Well, at first I didn't know because it was my first time. I didn't have anything to compare it to. So I thought, okay, we, I think we should be slowing down by now, but I'm not sure. So I was yelling out to the instructor and he wasn't responding. And I thought maybe he just can't hear me over the wind. But then as more time passed, which would have only been, you know, a few seconds, I, I saw a parachute tangled up in a ball in front of me instead of above me. And that's when I realized we're a hundred percent about to crash. Mm. And I thought there's, there was no doubt in my mind that I was about to die. You know, you don't think it's possible to survive something like that. Yeah. So, and the main thought I had was just this deep sense of regret that I'd lived 20 years of my life without ever stopping to take a moment to realize how lucky I was to have been alive. And I thought how ironic and what a shame it is that I'm only realizing how much I want to live when I've got 10 seconds left. Yeah. Mm. Let's fast forward through uh, through the actual fall. You know, you went through surgeries, recovery. You were told you will never walk again. Mm -hmm. How how difficult was that to receive? Yeah, and it was it was just such a contrast going from you know traveling overseas, twenty years old, so carefree, to then a few days later being told I was now a paraplegic and I would never walk again. And it was in a foreign country too, so there was a bit of a language barrier. It was hard to actually find out what was wrong. But it was just such a shock. It was so hard to wrap my head around such a new reality so quickly. Mm. After the surgeries, the rehabilitation, it was quite a long, painful journey. What was the most challenging part of it all? Oh, I don't know what the most challenging part was. Probably when I was, I was in Switzerland for a month in hospital and that time was really hard, again, because of the language barrier. And my mum and sister flew over, but you know, I didn't have all my usual support that would be there. And it, it was just, life felt so unreal in that time, being overseas. You know how sometimes being overseas doesn't feel like real life. So that, that was definitely the most challenging time and just trying to catch up with what had happened. Yeah. You write about the fact that you had some dark thoughts. Yeah. Um, you're quite open about the fact that you were suicidal at times too. What was that turning moment? What was that point when you went from these dark thoughts to, I can do this and yeah. I will do yeah. this? So I have no idea why, but one morning I woke up and I just felt completely different. You know, nothing in my body had changed. I was still paralyzed. I still had a catheter attached to me and everything was the same physically, but I just felt completely different. And I had this sense of like, okay, this accident has happened. And as much as I want to take it back, there's nothing I can do to change it. So I can be paralyzed and upset for the rest of my life, or I can be paralyzed and try to move on with my life and see what I can create. How much do you think that acceptance of your circumstances actually helped to heal as well, that healing journey? Yeah, I don't know about the physical healing journey, but it definitely helped mentally because I, I came to accept life in a wheelchair very early on. 
And so any healing, physical healing that I had after that was just like a cherry on top. I wasn't, you know, I didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket of only being happy if I could walk. I wanted to make sure that I was okay, whether or not my body got better. And of course, coming home, you had your support, you had family, friends with you. Yeah. That must have been really important for you as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I flew home to Sydney and was in a spinal ward for three more months. And I honestly <laughs> loved being in the spinal ward. Every day we'd do physio two times a day, we'd have wheelchair lessons. And on the ward, I was surrounded by people who were all going through the same thing. So I honestly really enjoyed that experience, which probably sounds weird. <laughs> so, you know, anybody that's reading the book, what would you like for them to take away from um, the book? I hope that people just kind of think, maybe they'll, they'll realize that we all have so much strength inside of us that we don't realize. Because I never knew that I had any strength inside me. When the accident happened, that's why I was so devastated because I thought, you know, there's other people out there who would be able to deal with this, but not me. I didn't think I was someone that had any resilience, but you know, we don't know what we're capable of until we're in that situation. So I hope that it gives um, other people hope that they can get through whatever it is they're facing. Anyone looking at you right now would think, well, you're all healed, everything's all fine, but you are still living with that injury, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So physically, it, yeah, it looks like I'm okay because I can walk again. I still walk with a limp, but I also can't feel anything from the waist down. And I also lost bladder and bowel control and have a lot of pain. And so there's, there's still a lot that goes on that can't be seen, which if, I talk about it because I never knew anything about spinal cord injuries before my accident. So I assume a lot of other people wouldn't either. And you walked the runway at yeah. the Australian Fashion Week this yeah. year. How amazing was that? Oh, it was an experience I definitely never thought I would be a part of, but it was just such an incredible experience. And all of the models had disabilities and the fashion designer had a disability. I think she was the world's first quadriplegic fashion designer. So yeah, it was just an incredible community and experience to be a part of. Yeah. When you're talking to people who do have a disability um, and they're struggling with it, what do you say to them? Oh, I don't know. Honestly, everyone that I've met with a disability is just the most um, upbeat, fun, hilarious people I've ever met. Like, I don't know. I think it's more important for um, able-bodied people to maybe not, yeah, to maybe realize we don't need to treat people with disabilities any differently than we would talk to anyone else. Um, Emma, it is wonderful talking to you. It's, it's wonderful speaking to you. My last question to you is, if you hadn't had the accident, do you think you'd be a different person? Do you think you'd be a better person or a less person? I mean, there's no way of knowing. I, I changed so much from this one thing, but again, I was 20 and I'm sure I would have changed so much. I'm 29 now, so I'm sure in my 20s I would have had a lot of change anyway. But so much, I gained so much perspective and appreciation from the accident, which I don't, I don't know if I would have had the same outlook that I did without it. So, I don't know, I'd like to think that I'm better for it. <laughs>